So we're here at the PBS Works user group. So who is Altair and who do you help? Altair is a company that focuses on simulation. And uh, when we mean simulation, we're talking about simulating all kinds of phenomenon, right from product design to uh, business analytics. And as part of the process, we have built not only software tools that solve these complex problems, but we also facilitate as part of that the process of managing the high performance compute clusters that allow solving these complex problems. And as part of doing this, we also generate tremendous amounts of data, which we've been handling, uh, we've been visualizing them, we've been analyzing them, and making a better world for all of us. Um, we could categorically say that nothing that is highly engineered in the world, um, everything that's highly engineered in the world uses alters, some part of alters technology in some form or the other. The cars you drive, the planes you fly in, um, the, um, uh, the aircrafts that, uh, uh, the war fighter planes that you, you see, anything that's highly engineered, the computers that you use, um, all of them use some form of alters technology, including the iPhones and other um, you know, uh, components that you use every day. So Ravi, I mean, everyone's talking about big data. Well, how does Altair define big data and how does HPC fit into that? Uh, big data is a big buzz and it means different things to different people. And uh, within Altair space, uh, the way we see big data is it emanates from a lot of different things that we do. One of the big things in the engineering world um, is we've been handling big data for a very, very long time. Um, but as I said, we facilitate solving these complex physics problems which generate tons and tons of data, which we've been visualizing and analyzing for decades. And um, now from, from, uh, uh, from what is happening, there are a lot of technology changes that are happening. Number one is um, the ability to do multi-physics, which means you want to do combine different phenomena like structure-fluid interaction. Uh, and uh, also you want to increase the fidelity of your models. And the barriers to entry uh, for solving some of these problems it was always hardware costs. And the other side of the equation was the software costs. And the barriers of entry for so hardware costs have been lowered by the advent of all the cloud uh, players. And the cost of running a job today costs a lot less than it used to run in the, in the, uh, than it used to in the past which means that I can run higher fidelity models, number one, I can solve multi-physics, and in the old days we used to run one simulation, which is called one nominal simulation under a certain set of boundary conditions. But today we can run very complex simulations. What I mean by complex is we can run design of experiments, we can run stochastics, which combines all the variables into all the possible combinations, which means you're running thousand times as many simulations as, in, as you did in the past. And all this is possible because of, you know, three things I attribute this, the three things. One is the creativity of the individual engineer, which is absolutely important, or the, the person who is looking at uh, solving either this problem. The second aspect, as I said, was the hardware. And the third aspect is availability of the software. And at least as far as Altair is concerned, we are trying to eliminate those two barriers, the hardware and the software, by having a very, very comprehensive um, licensing model that allows people to use. And we are also allowing people to, all our software run on Altair tokens. And, um, and the way we are facilitating even using the hardware resources as part of the token system is also very unique in the industry where you can swap the tokens that you bought for hardware cycles, which means you can run more with what your investment and combining your software and hardware and optimize that as well. And also what we are also allowing um, uh, our end customers to do is we see again in the analytics space uh, data explosion, as I said, for these uh, th uh, three reasons. We are also allowing uh, the c end companies to analyze. Uh, we have two different products. One is the PBS analytics, and the other is a software asset optimization, which basically keeps 
tab on all your HPC and Alertex in terms of what is going through the data center, what are the jobs being go going to the data center, how many jobs are in queue, and so on and so forth. All the analytics pertaining to the HPC world. And on the software asset side, just like any other manufacturing, for example, in an en en manufacturing environment, you buy resources and you have them, and if it's not producing anything, your investments are getting wasted. Many times in the software world, you don't see those because it doesn't stand out. It's, our, it's, our, it's bits and bytes. Right. And um, we, by virtue of bringing software asset optimization, we bring all those un unused inventory up there for everybody to see. How are these the resources being um, you know, used or not being used, which is cost to the end corporation, end uh, customer. right? So we're being, bringing all those to the forefront. So you can also not only optimize your um, simulations and your virtual simulations by swapping, as I said, hardware to software, but you can also optimize your whole cost infrastructure and making sure that both the hardware resources are being used through our PBS analytics and the software assets are being used. So we're providing all the possible indicators in addition to solving the problems and bringing all those things to the front. So we're very unique in that space. So how does